Commercial Construction Coffee Talk fans. My name's David Corson. I'm your host. Thanks for chiming in and finding us on the web. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction and Renovation Magazine. We help our readers design, build, and maintain better facilities. That's our editorial target. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Down here in the South, SEC football's back. Georgia Bulldogs went to Fayetteville, Arkansas, beat those hogs. And man, was it ugly in the first half, 7-2. What a score. Put the other quarterback in, crushed those guys in the second half. So it was good to see the dogs win. Everybody's flying their flags down here in the South. You know, it's football Saturday, and, uh, you know, the, the – Weathers, the heat's gone. Thank God, it's a little chilly at night. I walk the dogs in the, at night in the morning. The dew, it's it's really nice. COVID's kind of going down. That's nice, you know. Remember, everybody out there, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Keep your surroundings. You're gonna make it. Less than I think we're at 35 days till the election. Oh my God, I'm so sick of all these pop political ads. Every time uh, that I'm looking at anything on the TV, there's another political ad. May the best man win. I can't wait for November 3rd. Get the election over. Someone win. Count the votes. Move on. I'm ready to go to 2021. Who's ready to close out 2020? I know I am. You know? Anyway. And, uh, and the Falcons, 0-3. Oh, Those guys can't win a game. They, they lose in every game this year. I'm not watching. I'm just looking at the scores. I turned the TV on on Sunday, minute 20. They blew another lead and lost. And, this, and the coach still has his job. Oh, my God. Oh, anyway, it's fall. I'm in a great mood. Starting the week out on a great note. Have an awesome show. Have one of my favorite, favorite clients, subscribers, readers, friend. He's a restaurateur. He's been with multiple brands. Known him forever. He's on my editorial board. His name is Mr. Ron Bidnose. He's the vice president of construction for Bubacoo's Burritos, one of the fastest growing franchises in the country. Just finished his 100th store as a mile mark. So, Ron, say hello to our listeners out there. Everyone, this is uh, Ron. Pleasure to meet you all. And you're calling me from the beach in uh, basically central Jersey, correct? Yes, I am. We're in, we're, in this, we're in the great and powerful Jersey Shore down here. Okay. So... Uh, I've known Ron forever. He, he, he was uh, with, with uh, Johnny Rockets. He was on the biggest, he was on the cover of uh, on my issue of one of my, I've been in publishing 20 years. He was on the largest issue I ever produced at 276 pages when he was with Johnny Rockets. Then he, when he was with Marie Callender's, he graced my commit, commercial kitchens cover. And then he, now he's at Bubacoo's. He started with 10 stores. Now he's got over a hundred and he just graced a, uh, as a third cover feature with Bubacoos. So actually Ron is in his own realm with me as one of the only cover features or brands that has been with three different brands and has been graced the cover of the magazine. You know, you're, you're in your, you 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 know, you're like the hall of fame of CCR. You well, know? thanks Dave. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a pleasure being around and uh, I have to tell you, it's been, uh, it's been quite a long time. You know, it's been just about 20 years now. You and I know each other and, uh, I tell you, it's been quite the roller coaster with uh, with the brands I've been through and and uh, the brands I've built along the way and and continue to do. Uh, it's just been it's been really exciting, uh, you know. E even in this uh, 2020, which everybody wants to forget at this point, uh, we have actually had a, su a superb year and we're continuing to uh, s to see really good results out of our not our development schedule, but in fact our our uh, restaurants and uh, and our year over year numbers as well. Yeah, well, we're just we're just we're just popping right through. Well. The way it works here is you got to tell your story. So, uh, you know, we know you're a Jersey boy, but you know, we want to know where you grew up, you know, what your parents did, you know, where you went to school, how you got in this crazy construction gig. And, uh, yeah. you know, if you got any dogs, you know, kids, oh, that yeah. kind of stuff. Sure, uh, sure. And then, uh, and then we'll kind of transition, you know, into the rest of, the, of our, uh, of our uh, podcast. So the floor is yours, Mr. Bidnos. Let, let's hear your story. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, as you said, I am I am definitely a Jersey boy. Uh, started back in northern Jersey. Uh, that's when we grew up and uh, spent most of my summers at the Jersey Shore, as many people did back then and, and even today. 
really, uh, it, as far as uh, growing up is concerned, I had a great uh, childhood. My parents were super supportive. My dad was a, uh, a, a an actual steel rule die maker. He made actual boxes, uh, and 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 he owned his own company as well. And and he was really influential in me. You know, just going out and, and instilling a work ethic in me that 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 I was able to instill in my ch- uh, you know my kids as well. And uh, and we just had a great summer. Uh, you know, great great time together every summer down the shore. And you know, I really grew up down here. And, were you the only uh, child? Did you have your brothers or sisters? I just just me. Uh, yeah, and my mom was a banker. She worked for banking her whole life, and uh, primarily in the loan department, and uh, and then uh, and then branched out eventually into uh, and management in the banks as well. So she did a lot of work with them. Uh, and school wise, you know, uh, I want to raise Catholic guy. I went to uh, Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school, uh, and I spent uh, two years at Bergen Community College up in uh, Paramus, New Jersey, North Jersey. Uh, all the time, still going down and maintaining that 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 Jersey Shore mentality that I grew, always grew up with, and I continue to keep today. Uh, what did you what did you what did you study at uh, the community college? I actually was going to be a policeman. Uh, I, I I studied police science, uh, got a degree in that. Actually went to uh, was accepted into the academy. Oh, uh, nice! Yeah, I didn't I know that. I, you know, I never heard this before. Yes, absolutely. And uh, but there was something that was happening. I, you know, when I turned fifteen. I started working at a restaurant and um, it was quite, quite a long time ago. And what ended up happening was I just really enjoyed it. Um, and when I finished school, I had an opportunity to either go into to, to, to the academy, it, was, it would have been in, in the state police actually, um, or in fact, go into um, the restaurant business as manager, uh, take over as a management in one of the busiest steakhouses back then uh, called Rustler Steakhouse, which is- you know, Oh, Rustler's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Rustler's Steakhouse, right. And I uh, was able to, and I decided to go into the, into the steakhouse business uh, full time, and I never looked back. Uh, and I stayed in operations there for many years uh, in, in both Russell Steakhouse, eventually moving over to um, uh, the Howard Johnson's, uh, where I worked in Howard Johnson's for several years as well on the, in the restaurants. Got my first multi, multi-unit position in Howard Johnson's in Washington, D.C., as a matter of fact. Uh, from Howard Johnson's, I spent a lot Howard of Howard Johnson's with the pyramid. Exactly, and we right. all learned, and actually was we became part of Marriott. Uh, Marriott actually assumed the company, so I was able to get a lot of good uh, experience working for a company of that nature. It was growing dramatically at that those back back in those days, and continue to do so. Uh, it was a it was a great experience. Um, met my wife in in high school uh, when uh, we were 16 years old. Uh, we got married in 1983 when we were 23 years old, um, and uh, and we still get along today. You know, most of the time. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I, you guys uh, just had your anniversary, right? I saw we we're did. friends on Facebook. Uh, 30, 38 years. Yeah, I was going to uh, say 30. Last, I knew it was 35, 36, so 38, yeah. Yeah, 38 last Friday. So, uh, yeah, so it worked out pretty good for us. Cool. And uh, we were able, along the way, we were able to uh, produce two great children, uh, two, two boys, actually. Uh, one that actually works uh, for uh, Bubba Coos, uh, directly here uh, and just got promoted very recently into a multi unit position with us. And I have one that uh, lives in Florida at, at my house down there. Um, and he works for a six for auto rental uh, as a, a service manager for them. So, and my career, as I got into this, uh, I was an operations guy for most of my beginning of my career. Uh, my first actual gig with construction started in with Johnny Rockets is when I actually met with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was working here uh, after Howard Johnson's, I ended up working for Sabaro Pizza for, for a few years. And then actually got over, got a gig working over for um, Johnny Rockets, which at the time we only had three restaurants in the Jersey, New York area. We built restaurants in New Jersey, in upstate New York. And that's kind of how I started getting a little bit into the, into the construction business, where I was out here kind of project managing some of these locations while they were building. I learned a lot about how that worked through the GCs, the project managers and so forth. Um, and uh, Rockets saw something in that with me because they were developing uh, throughout the country, but they had a team of people that were really just contractors and developers, not necessarily some of them knew the business. So I got into the business the same way I continue to be successful in the business where I'm an operator that happens to build things. Um, And my my building experience came around that Johnny Rocket time when we did a substantial amount of build outs. And I actually had the opportunity, if you remember Dave, to move out to California in, in, in 2000, where I spent 15 years out there uh, most of those years working with Johnny Rockets, uh, building restaurants when I got out there. Uh, once I spent some, spent some time out there and kind of developed my, my skills, 
um, I was actually able to work uh, for a company called uh, Ruby's Diner, which is actually a West Coast based company, which I not only built three restaurants for them while I was there, but in fact, ran the whole company for the ownership that was actually taking some time off. So it was a great experience for me to actually learn all assets of the business, running all departments, and in fact, uh, building restaurants at the same time. Uh, so I always kept that build out going at once. It was always kind of something I always enjoyed because I, the biggest difference that I can tell you anything at all with, with, with results to if you have contractors or you have an operations team. Operations teams work very hard, so do contractors. Operations team have things that go on continuously forever. There's no real end to an operations job. When you have a contractor's position, you work really hard to get to a certain goal. When you get to that goal, you really have something you could be proud of. You really have something you can see and you can feel. Yeah, it. You, your end result, you see that. I, you know, I, I did this, I made this with my team and it's really much more satisfying that way than things that just keep going. And that's what always drew me into the contractor and construction side consi consistently because I always wanted that end game. I wanted that, I wanted to see something built. I want to see something that we did with my team, myself, and, and, and I, I push myself to the limits every single day, including just re recently, as you know, with our Las Vegas location. So it's been a great experience. And that's kind of how I, what I like about it is um, I enjoy the, the company of the contractors. I enjoy the, the, the delivering that product to the operations team and making them successful from the beginning and having them come in and, and just looking at a great location uh, just makes us proud. It makes our customers happy, makes our ownership happy, makes me happy. Nothing, nothing like it. I can't explain it any other way. It's just the way to go. So you were at Marie's, Ruby's, and yep. then how did Bubacoo's come in, in the play? Well, uh, that's a, good, a, a quick story on that. I'll tell you exactly how they came around. Well, I know how it went, but you could say it. You know. I will. B both of the owners uh, uh, that, that uh, started the company, the founders, uh, uh, Bill Hart um, and Paul Altiero, worked for me for John, at Johnny Rockets for many years. Um, I, in fact, uh, I, I, Paul and I actually worked together very closely. I developed him and kind of was his mentor in the company. And then he I was going to say, you trained them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, same thing with Bill. Bill Hart was kind of worked with us and again, worked with us both in that company. And what we did was, as I moved over to California, they, they continued to grow and develop in Johnny Rockets here and then eventually broke off and started this company, Bubba Coos Burritos. And we kept in touch the whole time. You know, they, they, they opened a couple of stores at a time. Uh, the company actually started in 2008. Um, by the time I got there, which was now about, just about four years ago at this point, so it would have been about 2016. Mm -hmm. There was 10 locations when I first got there. All along the way, we were always talking. We were friends. You know, we always got together. And uh, they said, listen, we need somebody like you here to help us out, to help grow our brand, not only operationally, but in fact, on construction side. And, uh, you know, I, I was looking to come over from back from California. Um, I, uh, at the time, between that time, I actually bought a house in Florida because uh, I was commuting back and forth from Florida, California. Right. And Jersey, Jersey, to me, was my home anyway. And now I just go back between here and Florida. And the fact of the matter is, is that the guys that, that you know, we all stood together, we're all friends, um, and we work together. Uh, it, and, and it's been a very lucrative, uh, you know, situation for all of us. Um, and I really enjoy what I do. I really enjoy working with these guys. I mean, do we agree on everything every day? No. You know? <laughs> uh, you know, when I first, you know, do, do I listen to what they tell me? Eh, you know, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But not always. Well, uh, I met them when we were at the NRA show. Yeah, yeah, the uh, NRA show. Yeah. Back. I met him, you know. We, you know we, and, and, uh, they were and, like, and, and oh, yeah, Roman, well, he trained me. Uh, he used to be my boss, you know. Yeah. You know? They trust me. They, they, you know, they like me here. They trust me here. And, and in fact, I, I wanted another company to build before, you know, I decide to, you know, and, and my, you know, my own self and retire someday. And I said, you know, I got one more company to do. And I said, this is the one. This is what I want to do. And this is why I'm here. It's been great. Yeah. I had a, con I had a, project manager firm on the podcast, you know, uh, a little ways back. Anyway, he said, you know, if you look at your finger, construction's like your fingernail. And then once it's done, it's all operations, facility maintenance, you know, and, and yeah. that's the life of the store. But yeah. really the construction part is just a really, really tiny part. It is. Once that's done, you know, it's everything else. So, yeah. you're, so your thing about operations and construction was right on key. But when he did that analogy, I, 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 it kind of hit me. I was yeah. like, oh, my God, that really is, you know, the gig. It makes sense. Yeah. And I tell you, what, what, just not only making sense, but in fact, helping these people. You know, we have a lot of people that come in, uh, two, three unit deals that are developing their own companies and their own selves. 
I get a chance to really work with these people too and develop them and teach them how, to, how this works. And in fact, um, I, I've been very lucky uh, and, and just having these stories just unbelievably successful. We have, we've had a sub- tremendous year. I know we're going to get to the COVID thing in a bit, but mm-hmm. we've had an unbelievable year and we're going to continue to do that. And, and I think that it's something that it's just in our brand. It's in our DNA because we're all operators and we're, we all want to make it happen. And we're very, very tenacious on what we want, but we're also, we're open to things. We're open to suggestion. We're not, we're not so structured that we, we can't look at something different that somebody else wants. And, and I believe that, that that really makes us unique. Uh, where we're going to let you come and customize some of the things that you want to do when you come with us. And in fact, again, another thing that I like to do, the teaching and the hospitality. I have the, I have the operations experience. I want to teach people. I want them to learn. I want them to be successful. And so far, so good. It's been great. So let's talk, let's talk about the pandemic, but scoot yourself down a little. I want, to, I don't want your head getting cut off, though, because you're getting so excited. You're popping up there. There you go. <laughs> uh, you know, hey, it's like, you know, uh, so... <laughs> The pay, you know, starting the year off, yep. uh, everything's cruising right along. Yep. Um, you and you and Taylor came down to the summit in Jacksonville, yep. and uh, you know, uh, went back. February came along, and then March came, and then boom, everything got shut down. I yep. always say Tom Hanks got the virus, and everything went down from there. And it then did. no one really knew what happened. And now here we are at the end of September, and the co- and the virus is still here. They got the vaccine, hopefully. Uh, you know, we've talked, I've talked, you know, I've had all sorts of people on the, on, on the, on the podcast. And uh, so how did your company, being, a, you know, basically the hospitality, restauratory, you're dealing with people, right. how did you guys weather the storm, per se, from mm-hmm. when it hit to the, to the severity, being in, in New Jersey, I know it was a lockdown state, basically. It yep. and now it's kind of getting reopened. How did you weather that, you know? Well, initially, we were certainly uh, caught by surprise because we wanted to make sure that whatever was happening, we were taking all the right precautions, which is what was our paramount to us, not only to protect our, our, our clients and our guests, but in fact, our customers and our, and our crew. We wanted to make sure our crew and everyone was, was comfortable and safe. The first thing we did was that there's, there's four people in the executive group that we have, and uh, all four of us typically, what we did was we all worked locations for the first month. We literally work shifts in locations five days a week for, for, for a full month because we wanted to see what was exactly happening. We wanted to make sure that things were in place that we put in place. Procedures were being followed. People were taken seriously and people were safe. That was the first thing we did to make sure that things were just exactly right. And in fact, we found out there was a, there was a lot of things that we already had in place in our system, in our stores that were working very well. And all we really did was enhance some of those with some additional sanitizing techniques and wearing of gloves, different colored gloves for different positions, things like that. So once we figured out that it was safe, the first week was, was kind of rough because nobody, everyone was scared. Nobody was going out. We never closed. So our restaurant stayed open the entire time with all of our required, uh, I'm going to say enhancements to sanitation and, and, and protection from gloves to uh, masks, to uh, additional sanitizing, to just, closing down parts of our restaurant that we weren't using. But we never lost an interest in our protection of our food, which has always been paramount to us. Everything else that we did in the restaurant was, was already safe, but enhanced in a certain way to make sure that each of these people were protected and our employees were happy. You know, mm-hmm. we wanted to make sure that they were safe, they were happy. We certainly didn't put, if everyone didn't want to work, we let them, they, they didn't have to. We didn't, there was no penalties, there was nothing like that. But in fact, our crew and our stores rallied. Because there were so many closures and there were so many things going on, people started coming in and were genuinely happy to see us there and open and very, very, I guess, appreciative that we, that we were not only safe, but we were taking care of things and we were open. We, we had several weeks of banner sales. It was almost unheard of. We were double digit positive for almost the first month and a half after the first two weeks. And we continue to rise and continue to do that and enhance our protection and enhance our numbers. We actually created uh, different food uh, items like the taco kits and the quesadilla kits that were more family friendly and oriented and, and priced them low so people would be able to spend, have money to buy these things and feed their families. We were concerned about 
pricing. So we actually lowered some of the things that we worked through to make sure that people can actually afford to buy food for their family. And we were very, and we've always been very community oriented. We continue to be community oriented. Mm -hmm. And we want we know we want to be part of that organization. We want to be part of that 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 you know people who are comfortable with us and they want to come to us. And that's always been our mission to do that. You know, we're not worried about you know anything that's going around us. We we take care of our own self, our own people, and make sure everybody's happy and and, and enjoys. And quite honestly, not only do we do banner sales and continue to do banner sales even today, we had the greatest increase in summer we've ever had in our entire history this summer. Uh, our employees and and our and our employees' families have been well taken care of. We've added ranks and added people to the organization, so we we can support that. And quite honestly, the the company is thriving. Uh, again, the ver the very best year we've ever had, not only in operations, which is what I've just been talking about primarily, but in restaurant openings. Uh, we opened 11 stores since March, brand new, uh, which is almost unheard of. Um, right now, I've got about 15 stores in the pipeline that are building us different degrees of locations. I'm building uh, the Vegas location. Uh, we're opening actually on the Thursday of this mm -hmm. week. Um, and then we'll be opening Monroe, New York next week. Um, and then a week after that is probably going to be Lincoln Park in New Jersey, or maybe two weeks after that. So we're, we're still opening a store about every other week or so, um, and continuing to have those stores just hit banner numbers for us. I don't know, you, do you have a store in Atlanta? Nothing in Atlanta yet, but, Come on, we, are, we, we want you in Atlanta. We're in back, we we're, we're, closest we are is back to Georgia right now, over, over by you. But yeah. we did, we, were, we are open in California, up in uh, Lancaster. Uh, we have three stores building right now in uh, Florida, two in Tampa, and one in the Melbourne side. Um, in the next coming weeks, I'm going to be starting Nashville, the first store, Louisville, and Cincinnati, all start. Uh, those companies, those are, those, those are all franchise locations coming up. And, um, we're continuing to be to develop and work with our new franchise groups and our existing group of groups and communities that are wanting to grow with us. Again, we we're very very happy that we're set up with all of the right online services, all of the right delivery services, uh, all of the right walk up stuff, and everything that we do, including our loyalty program, is designed to make it easy for people to come in, get their stuff, or have it delivered to them. And and they take care of business. And so, were you consider it? Were you were you considered essential in New Jersey? Is that how we you are because it? we're a restaurant and we're yeah. considered essential. And we since we were already set up, we couldn't have no inside dining up until very recently. Actually, inside dining is allowed now to be I believe twenty percent, which is just started about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are letting some people come in now, but quite honestly, it hasn't really affected us either way. We we've been. And have just having a, a stellar performance this year. It's it's, it's near incredible, quite honestly. We're very when lucky. I look at your brand, it's almost it's almost like a you know people go there, they're, they're almost like a cult gig. Am I right? It you absolutely know? is, especially in South Jersey. You know. Yeah, I mean that's you know I've talked to people all boobacoos. Yeah, you we, know. It's funny. Like I, I always wear the I always wear the logo. It's up here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always logoed up, or I'm driving the boobacoo van. You know, I'll be, I'll be driving a Bubba Koo van like I did a couple of weeks ago. I, I stop at a light. People are beeping at me. You know, Bubba Koo's, Bubba Koo's. It's like, it's literally like a cult following. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't quite think that we're in and out yet, but I think we're on our way. <laughs> yeah. Know? In and there out is go. an absolute cult. Yeah. There's but another one I want in Atlanta. In and out. If you're listening yeah, out there, we want what do you do? You know, Amazing. I yeah. get the double, the best fries and a chocolate shake. And I want to yeah. team another t-shirt too. <laughs> Yeah, we're, I tell you, it's been, uh, it's been quite the ride. And uh, we, we're called, we, you know, you walk in a, a grocery store or you walk in a, 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 another business in town or anywhere in New Jersey and you're like, oh, Bubba Coos, what store, what store? I love that place. And we get stopped all the time. It's amazing. It's amazing. And little do they know that, you know, you're like the man behind all the stores, you know? I, yeah, I say I'm. Oh, yeah, you like it so much? Oh, yeah, I built that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I built that one, too. Oh, we are, yeah, we are definitely lean and mean. And, uh, yes, I have my hands in just about everything, more, more than I care to think sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but, again, it's a total team effort with us. And, uh, again, I would not be able to do it without the support of, of uh, my ownership uh, and, and then, then give me the free reign to do what I have to do. And um, we, we finally have a, a full-time operator, too. His name's Gus, great guy. Uh, he's been with us just under about a year now, and uh, he's he's helping on operations so I can focus 100% on development and, and construction. 
you know, it's a really cool thing. I always tell people, you know, retail, restaurant, how's it, you know, it's, it's a big, very small world. And the people that you, you know, that have been there, you never want to burn any bridges because okay. you never know. And look at the guys that you trained. They went off, they did the thing and they brought you in at the right time and look what you've done. Yep. And, and everybody prospers. And everybody. Uh, the really cool thing is that what, you know, I like, cause you know, I, I'm watching the news and my friends are up North in Jersey and down in Margate and South Jersey. And, you know, I felt terrible about, you know, everything was going on with the lockdowns, you know, here in Georgia was a different gig, you know, we, you know, but it, you know, hearing the way that you, that you dealt, you did something for the community and it must've been really a cool thing because everybody was stuck in their homes. So seeing yeah. someone that actually was not, not that you were on the front line in, in the ER, but yes. you were still out there acting like that. Yes. And again, it's, it's something that we took a position as a company to be, we want to be socially responsible and continue to be that way. It's been the way that makes us successful over the years. We, we just are. We're very community oriented, always a police fire, um, a, any school community gr groups, any, any kind of charitable stuff. We do outside catering. Our catering has, has been, even now we're still doing caterings, which is great. Matter of fact, we did a catering uh, last summer, which again was canceled this year, for uh, 3,000 troops um, that we catered 100% for uh, in uh, in Fort Earl here in New Jersey. Um, and we did they do concerts for their for the for the uh, they call it a three uh, joint joint venture concert deal. We served we served 3,000 meals there uh, at, during a concert. Um, it was it was the most amazing thing. Yeah, we set up an outside kitchen. We had everything inspected. I, I had all my people come in. Uh, I had m many, many people that wanted to volunteer their time. Uh, we have people volunteer product. We have people volunteer trucks. Cisco volunteered the, the trucks. We have people, the, the Pepsi, uh, you know, donated all the drinks, and we just and we we took care of the setup and everything else. It was an amazing thing, and, and we we would do it again this year, but this year they didn't have the the gig. Uh, yeah. But we do those all the time, and we we know that putting into the community absolutely works always, and it, it's been a staple of our company since the day one. So, and they let me build more stuff because you know the more money we make, the more money I can build stuff with. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're ready for you in the ATL. So uh, you know, and uh, you know, I, I, you know, we're ready. So when you're ready to come down here, uh, there's plenty of us Yankees living here. We're called damn Yankees because I, you know, we stay. And uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I've lost my jersey, my Philly twang. Nah, eh, people sometimes hear it. You know, I've been down here since '92, so I've kind of lost it. But we're ready for you. <laughs> You got it. Well, listen, I, I, I assure you that we'll be there shortly. Uh, and we're going to, as we continue to grow and continue to get territories, it's going to be great. And uh, hey, if I have to start my own franchise to get down here, I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. You know what listen, I mean? I'll, all you got to do is visit the website. I'll sign you right up. Yeah, there you go. See, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so if, if you wanted to leave our listeners with one word or positive thought yes. uh, before we end, what would it be? I'm going to say as our, nation and our world goes back to normal continue to be cautious but not afraid of looking into the future and you know getting your yourself back to normal i think that people are scared uh, a little bit too much i think maybe it's a media thing maybe it's just something that you know it's in your head or you know you're afraid because you've read too much script on something so move forward cautiously but move forward mm -hmm. you know don't don't just sit there and wait for somebody else to tell you or just just do it. Get out, you know, visit local businesses. You know, get, we need our businesses to, be, to work. We need, the, you know, shop small is big for us. As the big boxes, you know, go down and, and struggle and they're going to continue to struggle and there's going to be a realignment of all that and malls and everything else. But I'll tell you, again, based on the success of this company, shopping small and going out and, and really maintaining a, a good relationship with your community that's and, and as you grow and become more i'm going to say comfortable with things the way they are today don't be, but don't be afraid to go out you know we we need revenue we need people out there to keep businesses flowing i think that we're in a good position as we continue to work through this pandemic i really think that it's something that's that again if don't be afraid is really what it is don't be afraid, but be cautious. Listen, I I played lacrosse all summer in the men's league. You know, I'm on the board, but I, I run my, my team. And uh, I told my team members, I said, look, 
if you got your parents living with you or you, you, you know, you got asthma or whatever, we're, you know, you're, we, it's 35 and over. So yeah, you're, everybody's overweight. So it is the reality of it, you know, but I yeah. said, look, you, I'm not going to be mad if you don't play. It's okay. Yeah. You know, but don't, don't sit in your cave. You got, you got it. You know, the, until there's a therapeutic or a vaccine that works. All yeah. right. You know, it's going to be with us. So you might as well learn how to do it. My doctor told me way back when, when this whole thing happened, you know, he said, David, I go in the ER four times a month. You know, I've looked at this. Bottom line is, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Nope. And keep your surroundings. Yep. And be aware of it. And you'll be okay. And if you do get it, 99, 99, 98% of people, will, will, you'll, you're going to recover. And yep. believe me, I feel terrible about all the people that have passed. All oh, you listeners out there, don't get me hard. wrong. I know, you know, I feel terrible about that. I feel about terrible to that anybody that's passed, yep. you know, of anything, tuberculosis, cancer, COVID. I mean, listen, motorcycle accidents. I mean, anything. so, but you can't be scared. Life's a risk, no. you nope. know? You got to go out and still, and you got to, you got to trudge through and you got to make it happen. And, and it's going to, it'll make you feel better. It'll make you feel empowered a little bit more energized not that you're sitting back and trying to figure out or be worried about it you know build confidence as you continue to move ahead cautiously yeah and Absolutely. uh yeah we had 200 players we didn't have one COVID case you know all summer and played all summer and uh you know a lot of the bumps and bruises but i told people <laughs> like, you got more of a chance of getting killed on 285 here on you know on the motor speedway going around atlanta than you knew getting COVID. you know right. statistically then yeah. uh but you know, it, it, it's going to be here. So we got, you got to learn to live with it. You know, you, you, you just have to. And uh, so, but give it back to the community. That's, that's such a really good story about the, you know, listen, I come from a military family. So I'm, uh, you know, that, that's great that you did that for the troops. We were able to do it and we were honored to do so. And, and, and again, but that's just one thing that we do. Uh, we just happened to be a bigger event than normal. And uh, it, it was, it was very satisfying for all of us. Our, our employees jumped in all the time and, I tell you, we're we're again we're blessed with uh, with really good people and uh, and a great company. Uh, I, I really I really can't say anything more than that. I, I feel honored to be here, and I tell these guys all the time. It's a little corny, you know, that I say that because that's not usually my words. But uh, in fact, I am I'm honored to be here. I really am. So it's been great. So if someone wanted to get in touch with you, yes, how sir. would they reach out to you? Best way is uh, I, I use email. It's my best way. It's Ron at bubacoos dot com. So that's B u b b a k o o s dot com, or feel free to call me on the cell if you if that's something that you like to talk. I have it on twenty four seven, nine four nine five ten two four three nine. Well, if anybody's out there, you want to be a franchisee, you don't have a you know one of these restaurants in your location. Okay. I'm sure Mr. Bidnos here would love to you know help you build one and teach and teach you how to run one. Yep. Um, if you want to get in touch with me. I'm at David C, like Kat, David C at ccr-mag.com, and that dash is a little hyphen. Um, if you're not a subscriber, my website, ccr-mag, up on the toolbar, it says subscribe, hit it. We'll get you on the uh, circulation file. We send our magazine out these days to about 125,000 people, so a month. Uh, still printing a little print run, you know, for the covers and the articles and stuff. And uh, we had over um, just about 1.5 million visitors at our site last month. So it's uh, it's been amazing, uh, you know, going more into the digital age. Uh, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any cool projects, we'd love to you hear from my look at everything. We put it up on the web. You might end up in any, you could be a cover guy, cover boy, you know, you're like, hey, you got you to hit three times. It's not easy. Three times is tough. Yeah, you know, and uh, <laughs> I still think the Marie Calendars, well, was one of the best one with the pie. The yeah, I, I like the Rockets one myself, but I, yeah, you know, I, Rick, I Calendars like was, Rick Calendars was nice and tasty with the pie up there. Yeah, it was. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it, but you know, if if you got a really cool gig, you, you could end up on the cover. You never know what's going to end up in Anchor, you know, you know, in the digital version. So, um, yeah. uh, well, uh, all you commercial construction coffee talk fans, thanks for chiming in. Uh, we hope you, uh, you can find us on Spotify, Google and Apple. That's where our podcasts are. We also stream up on our social media and, uh, you know, we do these once a week. Uh, really appreciate Ron. I know you're on the, you know, getting your store done to Vegas this weekend. You just came back and we really appreciate you finding a few minutes with us. And, uh, 
Uh, we wish you uh, much more success. We can't wait to see when uh, 200 store, the 200 store gets built, you know, at the rate you're going, that's probably uh, next week, you know, right, but, right, uh, right around the corner. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming. So, you know, it was funny because when you talk to us, Hey, I just did my hundred store. I'm like, Hey, we got to get you on the podcast and all and now you're at one Oh six. You got six more before we even spoke. So 200 really could be right around the corner. It's coming, so, it's coming very quick. Well, we really, really appreciate it. And uh, all you out there, I want you to have a great rest of the week. Uh, remember, stay safe. Like I said, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Keep your surroundings. Most importantly, November 3rd, make sure you go out and vote. Okay? Don't trust the mail or anything. Go out and vote. You, you'll be okay. And uh, let the best man win. And then uh, we're going to finish this, the year off, 2020. Put it in the history books. And I'm looking positive for it. You know, 2021. Let's make sure when the vaccine comes in and, and let's get back into being, you know, social, support your local businesses. Like Ron said, get out there. You only have one life, live it to the fullest. And, uh, you know, you'll uh, look back and thank God that you did. So, uh, Ron, say goodbye for night. Say goodnight from New Jersey. Good night, everyone. Thanks for listening. We appreciate uh, everything you do for us out there. If you're in the service industry or, or a construction business, just keep going, man. Just keep doing it. Well, we appreciate those words of wisdom. And thank you to listeners for finding us. And uh, we'll catch you next time on Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. Have a great week. Enjoy the fall weather. And uh, we'll see you on our next episode. And Mr. Ron, I hope to see you soon in person. Okay? Hey, listen, everybody else does too. And tell your lovely wife, you know, I said hi and, uh, you know, and the dog too. I okay? will. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. We'll see you later. All right? All right.